before we get started with this video, I just want to thank everybody who's been subscribing and supporting my channel. And while I'm here, I might as well put in a shameless self-plug. You can go check out my website at loudlabsaudio.com. I'm currently in the process of starting a small speaker company, building small consumer-grade speakers and subwoofers. I'm still in the process of setting up the web store, but I plan on having it operational by the beginning of April. If you guys are interested, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter for all the latest updates. You can also follow me on Instagram at Loud Labs Audio for pictures of prototypes as well as behind the scenes to see exactly what I do. Okay, now let's get started with the video. Okay, today I'm gonna go over my 4000 watt home audio subwoofer. I can't really call this a home theater subwoofer because I don't really watch any movies with it and it's just like in my living room. So I guess it's a home audio subwoofer. But anyways, the uh, components include a Bicar Audio Team 18 version 2 uh, subwoofer driver. This is obviously, you know, a pretty massive driver and enclosure. Um, these are two 6-inch ports. So currently the box is tuned somewhere around the 20 hertz mark, I think. I originally built this with um, a tune right around 24 hertz, but since I added the, um, the flares on the back side of the ports, I think it dropped it closer to about 20. Okay, so this is the back of the uh, cabinet. This is the 4000 watt speaker power uh, amplifier. It's the SP1 4000, and it is rated to do 4000 watts of continuous power um, at 40 hertz for six seconds. It'll do uh, 4000 watts continuous. And I mean, the thing really isn't that big. Now there's a soda can for comparison. So there's really not a whole lot going on with this thing. Um, but this amplifier just provides massive amounts of power and it is rated for 120 volts So you just plug it right into the wall and you know, you got 4,000 watts So I'm gonna run some sine waves through this thing. Um, see what I can tear up in the house and uh, Yeah, let's just see what happens You can hear a lot of rattles in my house I mean it really ain't even moving That's 21 hertz. So it did 128 dB right in front of the port there at 21 hertz. That's getting a little bit ridiculous. It's getting a little bit warm, um, not crazy hot. The saying is, if you can't smell it, you're not playing it right. Um, so I guess that means go louder. Yeah, that's uh that's a little ridiculous. 
Yeah, I think it's just still barely moving. These ports are a little bit noisy. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty wild. Yeah, this thing's not even warm. I mean, this thing is stiff as a prosthetic leg. Actually, that's not good. Okay, so I realized this um, the sub's not planted to the ground like it should be anymore. I recently installed some uh, some speaker spikes to the bottom of this thing, and it should be stuck into the ground. And I don't know why it's not. So I'm gonna flip this thing up and see exactly why it's shaking around like that. Okay, here's the bottom of the cabinet. So I installed these um, Dayton Audio speaker spikes in the hopes that they would kind of prevent this thing from shaking around on the carpet. Before I didn't have any feet of any kind um, on the bottom of the cabinet. And this thing just kind of shook on the carpet and just, you know, kind of moved around a little bit. And I wanted to try to prevent that. Uh, but what was happening is these are a two-piece design. So there's actually, I can't get this one undone, but there's actually two separate parts to this thing. There is the main piece and then there's a little piece on top if you could see that. It's a little like two-piece cone. Now all these started to back out on me. Um, both of these pieces were loose. Both the uh, the smaller section and the large section started to come unthreaded. So I might have to use some lock type to prevent these from coming loose again. Because the sub was able to actually uh, shake around quite a bit, which is not good. Okay, now with everything tightened up, this thing is much more solid. It still rocks around a little bit, but um, it's really not that big of a deal. It's definitely better than what it was. Not to mention, this thing is a huge pain in the ass to move around. With those spikes on the bottom of it, which really, really put it down into the carpet, you can't really slide it around at all. Not to mention, this thing weighs well over 150 pounds. I mean, just the driver itself weighs 70 pounds. Now, that's just the driver when you add, you know, probably another 50 or 60 pounds for the cabinet, and then, you know, another 10 pounds for the amp. This gets to be a pretty chunky thing pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, that's uh, my home audio subwoofer. Much more videos of this thing to come. I want to build something similar to this, but use a different port setup, same driver, pretty much similar um, box configuration and volume. Uh, I just want to do something different than the two six inch ports. It sounds pretty good, it gets crazy loud, um, but I think I can get it a little bit better. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.